guys, this is Anna. Today is Saturday and yesterday, Friday, was my last day officially at my school where I was teaching English. Now, as I said in my last video, um, I actually finished classes with all the students last Friday, so a week ago. So what was I doing this week? Well, there was paperwork to do, but also there were some students that attended school. Now, why did these students attend school? Well, it was their week of recuperation. I mentioned it in my previous video um, where I talked about how the education system in Colombia could change. And I touched on this topic very briefly where I'll leave the link for the video and the blog post up here, but also in the link below. And so recuperation is basically trying to recuperate a subject that you may have failed. So today I want to talk about the recuperation process, but also how the students fail a full year here in Colombia and how common that is. Now, first of all, I want to tell you about recuperation. So recuperation um, is basically, yeah, a chance, a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance for the students to recuperate the subject that they are failing. Now, how many opportunities do they get in one year, in one school year? Well, it's about 10 or even 13 chances that the students get to recuperate. Now, what does that involve? So there are usually, like in my school actually, so there are three trimesters, and in each trimester, they get at least two or three or more opportunities, depending on the teacher, to recuperate their subject. And then at the end of the year, even if they did end up failing the first trimester, they get another opportunity to recuperate that semester at the end of the year. And so this is like before school finishes, they get a chance. And then after school finishes, so the after the last day of school for all the students, which was a week ago, then they get this extra week to, to recover this subject. And then they get another opportunity in January as well. But it's a bit complicated. Now, I mentioned this previously in a video as well, but the students have around 15, 16 or 17 subjects that they are studying at the same time. And, you know, previously I had said that in Australia we study about eight subjects roughly at one time um, and then in my last year of high school which was year 12 I studied five subjects only five subjects that I chose myself in Australia we still pretty much study all the subjects that they offer here in Colombia except dancing um, but we don't study it all at the same time so it's not so much of a workload and here they study 15 to 16 to 17 subjects at one time. So they have, they're thinking about all these different things at one time. So to me, it's kind of inevitable that a student is going to fail at least one subject or even two subjects. What effect does this have? Firstly, on the teachers. So the teachers who are marking um, the students, what do they have to mark? They have to mark not only exams and tests and assignments, they also have to mark their notebooks. So it's basically like babysitting all the students and having to look through the notebooks page by page and check and sign if they have done every single exercise in class, if they have copied the exercise in class. And I mean, they have 40 students in each class. And so they have to go through 40 notebooks every so often to check that the students have completed their work. And they usually have four to five classes. So how many students is that? That's like 160, 200 students, 200 notebooks that they have to sign. And I mean, in Australia, our notebooks, they were not checked by the teacher. But if you have a test or an exam or an assignment that you have to actually hand in to this teacher, that is when it shows whether you have studied for the subject or not in your own time or in class, and you get a mark, you get a grade for your test and exam. So firstly, it is already a huge workload for the teachers having to check the notebooks. But if the student is 
failing or is has failed then there is a whole lot of paperwork for the teacher as well. They have to firstly contact the coordinator to tell them that the student is going to fail. Then they have to contact the parents to tell them that they are going to fail. So the teachers have extra paperwork to fill out just for the students that are doing badly. If the student is already coming to class and coming to school every single day and staying at school all day, then why shouldn't the student pass? In Australia, everyone passes. Everyone who attends school passes, as in they didn't know the content of the subject, then they would get a bad mark, but they still pass the year because they had the discipline enough to come to school to attend classes. What does this do to the students? Well, firstly, yesterday there were so many students that were so upset and crying and things. It basically affects their self-esteem a lot and it makes them feel worthless because they have failed something in their life at such a young age. And it also, it also makes them think that school is everything. And I am a very firm believer that school is not everything. School is not life. Learning is life, but school is not life. So why do they have to follow the education system to, in order to pass life? If they fail a year, that is one whole year that they have to repeat at a young age, wasting those years in being at school that clearly they do not enjoy and they have to stay there for as long as it takes. And I disagree with that entirely. I think that the recuperation process is failing the system and I think failing the students is failing the system as well. On the other hand, what does, what does recuperation prove or show to the students? It shows that you can do nothing the whole year or the whole term and then you just study for one week at the end of the year and you have the opportunity to pass. But basically it is teaching them to be lazy, 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 work really hard and cram for one week of the year and have the opportunity to pass or have the opportunity to fail. And this is not a very good lesson that we want to teach the students. We want the te to teach the students that you know, if you're bad at something, you're bad at something and that's okay. If you're good at something, work more in the thing that you're good at and have passion for and live happily and enjoy what you are doing. And, and at the end of the day, the students should be commended for at least attending the classes and attending school and not, you know, being rebellious and, you know, rebellious to the teachers and rebellious to the students, being violent or being criminal or something like that and not attending school, they should be commended for that at least and not punished for, for not writing in their notebook in one class. Because I actually know many, many students that I have spoken with in English who, who are very intelligent and who are very nice people, kind people, good to their friends, have social skills, have the skills to, you know, obviously communicate with me, so are not shy, and they fail the year. And, and I just completely, completely disagree, and it hurts me so much to see that because it's just teaching the students the wrong message and students should be happy in their lives you know they're at the peak of their lives basically they're so young they have the they have the brain capacity to learn what they want not what they don't want and so they should be able to just pass the year you know and grow as a person and just learn from their mistakes maybe and not have to punish them and fail them so I really think that the Colombian education system really should change because it is really hurting their youth and hurting the future of future generation. All the teachers that I speak to in the school disagree with recuperation and failing students. They completely disagree with both of these things and they are Colombian and they have been through the same thing and they completely disagree with it. So. So then who is making these decisions? Who is it? It's these people up here, the politicians, that know nothing about education. 
So please, please, hopefully it will change in the future. And students who have failed, don't worry, you are not a failure. You are not a failure. Please keep going and follow your passions and do what you enjoy in life. Keep happy, stay smiling and stop crying. <laughs> Okay, well thanks for watching this video and if you agree, please leave a comment below, give this video a thumbs up and to read this post and other posts on my experience here in Colombia, go to my blog which is AnnaTregellaSmith.com. Okay, well I'll see you next video. Thank you. Bye.